Good morning, early on families. Come up with more activities for siblings. Let me invent so that we can involve the family. So activity today called Funny Finger Puppets. Tickle your baby's funny bone with a pint-sized puppet show. Let your fingers do the walking and talking as you perform a baby-pleasing play using finger puppets. Perfect activity for helping your child to begin to distinguish between shapes and colors. In order to hold attention, it is important to remain as animated and as energetic as possible during your performance. You can purchase finger puppets in most toy stores or make your own out of gloves. The general idea here is that you take advantage of your fingers and gloves and especially if you have gloves and that have a missing partner over the years and you've only got one of the gloves out of the two then uh, it would be perfect for making finger puppets with winter gloves dishwashing gloves you can put googly eyes on the fingers of the gloves you can cut out shapes uh, you can draw pictures and then stick them on the glove. Now, if you are going to put googly eyes, I would strongly advise you to watch it okay. while they are watching the puppet show, just so that you make sure that the gloves and fingers and those small pieces don't get into the young infant's mouth. The idea here that they have suggested is for using dishwashing gloves and you cut the fingers off to make a set of puppets. They're uh, suggesting is not even wearing the glove to make the puppets, but you are cutting the fingers off and then you just slip the fingers on um, for puppets. So you can use dishwashing glove, fingers off, and then you decorate the finger part. You can use non-toxic markers to draw different characters or animals on each of the, the fingers. You can attach googly eyes with non-toxic glue. Consider using the puppets to dance along to, as you sing, Where is Thumpkin? Note, do not let your baby handle the song, Where is Thumpkin? You can find it on YouTube. You have both hands behind your back and you're able to sing. It's about each of the different fingers. Where is Thumpkin? Where is Thumpkin? Here I am. Here I am. How are you today? Very well, I thank you. Run away, run away. Now, some people have gotten used to singing the second line where they say, how are you today, sir? Or how are you today, ma'am? Try to sing songs that are non-binary and that are non-gendered. You can sing it with different family members' name and baby's name. So, how are you today, Jerry? Very well, I thank you, run away away run away we can use your index finger and pointer where is pointer where is pointer here i am here i am how are you today very well i thank you run away run away each finger can have their own name and generally in the children's center, we sing about all the fingers. Pumpkin, Peter Pointer, Tommy Tall, Ruby Ring, and Pinky, which that we've given to our five fingers. You can use the names from your home language, your family members, or uh, names of friends. Like puppet show idea for an older sibling. Also make these finger puppets to show their young infant siblings. Sometimes older children don't feel like singing these songs they can just have the the puppets and put on a show and have a conversation with their their young infant sibling the important thing is about encouraging that time together to to have that moment to bond together and build that attachment whether using the puppets to sing a song tell a story have a conversation the young infant would really enjoy that attention and having that kind of stimulation fun puppets Next, we have Baby's first photo album. Sure. The cutest little baby faces in a child-proof album. Babies just love to look at pictures of other babies, especially at their faces. Take a handful of close-up of your child's 
at different times of day to capture a variety of different expressions. For example, happy, sleepy, sad, or pensive. Get snapshots of other babies' faces, babies that are um, in the same baby group with your baby, or b other babies that are members of the family, babies of yourself, the parents, or baby pictures of siblings in the family. Put all these baby pictures together in the first photo album. Older siblings would love to help choose photos for the albums and point out pictures of themselves to the baby. This is a wonderful activity because then you're also making something with your older child and then having that to share with your baby afterwards. Cover the pictures with clear adhesive plastic and hook them together with loose leaf rings to create a mini album. Enjoy baby's look of delight as you leaf through the book together. Baby. Love uh, seeing pictures of other babies, uh, other faces. They really connect to facial expressions and eyes. Make sure you have pictures, uh, pictures. or even just regular pictures of and families members. and people that are in the baby's lives. And make sure that you are able to fill up the album with uh, many, many different pictures, even in, with different filters. You can have pictures that are white. You can have pictures that are with different settings. You can have pictures with funny filters. It makes the, the picture book even funner to look at. But for, for starters, having a just a picture of a face and smiles of other babies and family members and family members as babies, wonderful idea to, for showing your baby. Uh, for getting them used to seeing the faces of family members and other babies, even using them to other family members as well that they don't see as often uh, the pictures of these family members. Great older siblings into these ideas. I'll let you to choose the pictures, story. tell you with the pictures, and be sure to include their contributions into this baby photo album. The more that you're able to involve your other children in making these activities for your young infant, the more um, excited they would be and the more engaged they would be and intrinsically motivated to spend time with their younger sibling. This is another picture idea. Baby's cool close-up. Uh, this chic photograph series puts a modern twist on traditional baby pictures. You have no doubt taken a ton of pictures of your baby already. Why not capture each of their beautiful pictures in a photograph to create updated keepsakes you are sure to treasure forever? Begin by lying your baby down on the solid cloth. Either outdoors or near a closed window, the idea is that you have as much natural light as possible. Using black and white film, try to fill each photograph with just one part of your baby's body, their eyes, one ear, one hand, one foot. Have the images enlarged. Use a frame in each photograph separately and hang it in a cluster. Where you're taking black and white pictures, and it's just one part of the baby at a time. A great activity for older siblings to do with your young infant sibling. Let the older siblings hold the camera. Let them take the pictures and then you and your old child can decide which pictures to print and enlarge and make into this beautiful photo series. You can turn your older sibling or other family members into artists and even have a gallery in your own home to show out these pictures. You can also, after these pictures are taken, show the infant these pictures. Note how long they're able to hold their gaze for. Is a gaze when their eyes are focused on something, that is the way they're showing interest. And also if they have a soother in their mouth, or a pacifier that you noticed how they would tend to speed up the rate of sucking if if they're interested in something. The example of uh, Maggie on The Simpsons. And if you've ever noticed watching The Simpsons, if she's interested in something or she's excited about something, she sucks on the pacifier much quicker. And this is very real to most babies. Uh, in fact, if not all babies I've worked with, if they are sucking on something, they see something they're interested in, the rate of sucking will speed up. If they have nothing in their mouth and they're not soothing at the time, then yeah. use their eye contact. And if they're making eye contact with something, the longer they hold their gaze, the more interested they are in what it is they're seeing. So show your baby these pictures, the pictures of other babies from that 
fun baby album the pictures of the baby's body parts and their own from this baby close-up photo series and see how long they're able to hold their gaze see what pictures right. and that they're interested in and definitely have a conversation with your baby talk to them while you show them these pictures before and after playing music talk to them before or after singing to them wonderful for not only building attachment between family members and baby helpful for baby to be in the presence of this talking and listening to other adults and listening to children talk because the more that this happens the more we're able to um, enhance language development in babies as well the precursor to language development we talked a little bit about in previous weeks is um, allowing the young infant to mouth objects, to put things oh. in, to explore objects with their mouth. So have things in the home that are already clean and safe for putting into the mouth for cool. baby to push air in and out of their mouths. At this time, they're learning to make different sounds with the air they're pushing in and out with the way they're pushing the objects against the tongue and cheek and inside of their mouth. They're learning about different muscles in their oral cavity. So having young infants be able to mouth the toys, be able to put different objects in their mouth, definitely a wonderful idea. Make sure they're clean, make sure they're safe. Um, if you may not have objects that are um, already childproof, that are ready for them to put in their mouths, wetting a dishcloth or putting that in the freezer making sure it's clean and taking that out for baby after maybe 15 20 minutes of the cloth being in the freezer nice nice sensation for baby you could use objects for babies to put in their mouths make sure you clean them prior most of the time i've seen babies soothing toys and and teething rings like and that. that but once again if you do not have access to these materials, you can always look up on how to make your own. When you do make your own, I want your attention to childproofing these materials that are for young babies to put into their mouths so that no small pieces become a choking hazard. We've talked about two activities so far, uh, baby's photo album and oh, and as well as making finger puppets. These are all great ideas especially if the baby has older siblings that the whole family including the older siblings can enjoy to make for the baby as well as uh, playing with the baby to use to play with the baby the next activity would be milestone memory boxes collect all of the baby's firsts in this keepsake collection of shadow boxes detail the first haircut the first feeding, the first steps, make those precious moments last a lifetime by showcasing them in a series of shadow boxes. First feeding box, what you'll need, a shadow box. So what shadow boxes mean is that it's similar to a picture frame, something that you're going to hang up to display, but it's got bigger edges around the side. So you can actually put actual objects into the frames, the shadow boxes, and then have them displayed around your home. Whether it's an, another piece of plastic or glass in front of the shadow box, or whether the box is like a shoe box that you're reusing, or if you're actually gonna build a box, sure if you do build the box, that you're able to sand down all the different areas of the box and that you're able to make it very smooth and safe for baby to touch and play with. If you decide that these shadow boxes are only for display and that the baby is not going to play with them, when you, they may not be uh, at the baby's eye level, which is very understandable. You're not going to hang a bunch of um, shadow boxes or pictures down so low to the ground, but that you take your baby around um, to these boxes often after you've made the boxes. First feeding shadow box, what you'll need is a box, a shoe box, or if you make your own, just make sure there's a little lip around anywhere from 8 to 12 inches out would be a nice start um, so that you can have a nice surface area to put these items that you're going to put putting into your shadow box. And then for the first feeding shadow box, you have a photograph of your baby enjoying their first meal. And then you put a spoon in a bowl in the box and then you have that for display. First haircut shadow box, uh, a lock of hair from baby's first haircut. 
a photograph of the child with their new hairdo and first haircut certificate. So some children's hair salons and baby haircutting places will make a nice certificate for you for your young infant's first haircut. Uh, if you are trimming your child's hair yourself, you can create your own certificate that includes your child's name and date of the haircut and even signatures of the people around for that special occasion. You want to also include is a brush and a comb set in that shadow box. First steps shadow. So you'll need a photograph of your baby taking their first wobbly walk and then your baby's first pair of shoes. Merely parents in the past have taken the baby's first baby shoes and bronzed them. It's a way to keep the baby shoes. You can keep them in the shadow box. Play them. For each shadow box, remove the back of the shadow box, position and mount all of the objects inside, replace the back of the frame and display. Shadow boxes, um, the really fun um, baby close-up pictures, these will turn your home into an instant gallery for your next Skype call or video chat with family members. It'll be so fun to show these things off, especially a lot of fun ideas for you to do with your baby. I'm able to print your picture, or if you don't have a computer and all you have is a cell phone, for example, then show your infant the pictures on the cell phone, on the device that you've taken your pictures on. Just once again, paint sure. and not let the child put that in their mouth, the cell phone, because we don't want things like that in the child's mouth. Very careful. If you are letting your child play with your cell phone, your iPad, things like that. Pictures of other family members and pictures in general are also fun to share with your young infant. Also pictures from magazines, pictures of people, their faces, their smile. You have done the activity with taking pictures of your baby and making the shadow boxes and you've done the activities with the finger puppets then feel free to use other media to, to um, create new games with these activities. For example, using pictures from magazines and catalogs and flyers to find around the home that you might recycle anyhow. Those are to the finger puppets. Make those part of your shadow boxes. Have fun with that. The idea is creating opportunities for the whole family, siblings included, to spend time with baby to have fun with baby and making the best of baby's waking hours so to yeah. fill those uh, moments up with laughter and connection and, and interaction with the young baby and once again this is incredible for building attachment building trust promoting and fostering baby's language development baby's communication skills the barbells no time for the gym since your child's arrival these techniques are designed to help Not you into shape while you bond with your baby. Who needs weights when you've got a baby to tote around? Let your little one help you tone up your muscles with simple exercises that are fun for the both of you. And once again, you can feel free to teach these exercises to their older siblings. I would not suggest these exercises for a three or four or five year old, but you know, maybe a six, seven year old or older for the parents to do. Well, you can maybe to do chest press. Begin by lying flat on your back. Place your hands on either side of your baby's torso and lift them straight up and down. Resistance by slowing down the motion. So you have your baby and you lift them up in the air and you bring them down. While you're lying on your back, you lift them up into the air and you bring them down. Chest press, you can do tricep dips. So you sit on the floor with your knees bent. You put your baby on your lap so that their back is securely against the tops of your legs. Separate your legs slightly to create a cradle. Place your arm about one foot behind your back with your fingertips towards you. Slowly lift your body off the ground by straightening your arms. Keep your knees bent. Bend and straighten your arms while you keep your body off the ground. Place pillows or sofa cushions on either side of your legs in case your baby loses his I would not suggest with babies younger than six months. You know, babies that are eight, nine, 10, 11 months might be more suited for this activity because as you are doing your exercise with your arms and doing the dips and the presses, 
um, you're not actually holding your baby, which is why they also suggest having pillows on either side of your knees. This is for babies that are a little older. The last exercise that we have here that you can also do with babies and siblings can do with babies is bicep lifts. So stand tall with your arms straight out in front of you, position your baby face down on your arms so that their feet are pressing against your chest and you grip the top of their shoulders for support without bending your elbows, slightly raise your arms up and down. So you have your arms outstretched while the baby lies flat um, and you're supporting their abdomen, their chest, their bellies, their, their shoulders, and you're able to, without bending your elbows, lift the baby up and down. And the infant activity we're gonna introduce here is called baby touch. The power of touch makes baby feel safe and secure. It can help build muscles too. The first few months of your newborn's life brings never ending questions. Am I holding them right? If I touch them this way, will they feel comfortable? Touch is often one of the newborn infant's most highly developed senses at birth. Caressing your baby is vital to making them feel safe and secure. Many newborns love the attention they receive from their parents and from other family members. Through the use of inventive touching games, they may begin to strengthen their sense of sight, hearing, and touch. Here are a few uh, games or techniques to try. Hold your newborn's face close to your own and gently sway to some calming music. Hold one of their tiny hands in your and stroke it with your thumb. Touch and name the parts of your baby's body. Jump from foot to hand and hand to foot and watch baby's expression as you recite the names. Extend the arms when you say it and extend the legs when you say it. Play this little piggy pulling on the thumb and this little piggy went to market pulling on the index finger and say this little piggy stayed home. Pull on the middle finger and say this little piggy had roast beef and if your family is vegetarian or vegan they could have had something else they could have had a salad they could have tofu and then you pull up your ring finger and you say this little piggy had none and you pull on your pinky finger and you say this little piggy cried wee 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 all the way home and you can tickle your baby when you get to the part where the piggy says wee 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 all the way home. Uh, you can play bicycle. So as your baby lies on their back, lift their legs up, rotate them as if they were riding a bicycle. So you do bicycle kicks together, make up a silly rhyme and sing a song as you do it. Mm -hmm. Due to any melody of any children's songs you know, or if your child already has uh, shown you a favorite song that they like, then you change the words of that favorite song, use the melody and sing about things using that same melody and take advantage of what you know that your infant already likes. These simple interactions promote recognition and bonding and will help strengthen baby's muscles for changing chance. Definitely, we can't avoid diaper changing. Your family might be using cloth diapers or traditional um, disposable diapers. How it may be, your infant will always need to be changed no matter what kind of diapers they're wearing. Taking advantage of this time with your young infant is very crucial. It helps them to build a relationship with the, not only you, their caregiver, but also an understanding of their body as well. As you're touching the different parts of their body, um, let them know what you're doing. I'm wiping your private area now. I'm diaper now. I'm putting baby rash cream on you now. Or you can sing to them, keep eye contact, use this time to bond with your child for sure. It's well for your young infant just to be lying there naked on the table. And some infants might even do that because they might begin crying when they get changed or when the, you're taking their clothes off to get changed. Notice those feelings. Notice that reaction and definitely acknowledge them when you are in activities with the baby. Diaper time becomes a teaching time with this classic kids song. So t changing Table time provides a lovely teachable moment for you to share with your baby. The popular head and shoulders, knees and toes songs provides your child with a an educational way to begin learning about their body. As you sing, tap on the corresponding parts of their body so that they'll begin 
begin to connect the sounds of your words with the actual location on their body. Heads and shoulders, knees and toes, make up different verses. Okay. Heads and shoulders with different body parts and touch each of the body parts as you sing it to the baby and that the siblings can do with their infant siblings as well. We want everyone to have a chance to build a relationship and connect with the young infant baby. So once again, all these activities and ideas that I've shown you or talked about today, very good to do with the whole family, siblings included, and visitors who come to play with the baby. Make sure relatives and friends who you video conference with or chat with that they know these songs and rhymes and that when you are holding your baby to the camera or phone and chatting with these family members and letting them see the baby they can sing a song or two or tell a quick story to the baby and let the baby have a little bit of uh, attachment time with them as well even though it may be through a screen at the screen time for young young baby uh, and would not have them in front of the screen for 25 minutes to half an hour a day. And this is not all at once. This is like five minutes here, two minutes there, three minutes here. You know, the most at one time for a small infant or young baby, five minutes. Um, even then, that's too, too long for, for their um, sensitive eyes and their developing brain. We don't want them to have too much time in front of the screens. So we want to watch out for the kinds of stimulation we're giving to our young infants. It's very healthy stimulating our young infants and to be building attachment, but watch wow. out with what tools we're using and, and using human relationship. That's the best tool of all. You don't have to worry about overstimulating them. You do have to worry about um, overstimulating them if you are getting them really riled up or excited before nap time or bedtime. That's just a silly thing to do. If you are just singing to them, cradling them, rocking them, telling them a story, holding them, making eye contact with them, getting them to recognize different body parts, or you're showing them different body parts and you're able to touch them and and label them these are all wonderful things to do with the smile wow. or infant and there's no such thing as doing too much of those if you happen to be doing too much your baby would let you know your infant will start crying or fussing you'll get cues from your young infant or babies it's harder for the young baby or infant to show you these cues if they are in front of a screen or if their eyes are focused on something that's animated or releasing, um, it's almost quite hypnotizing for the small baby. And that's, uh, that's not something we want to do out for screen time. Um, and if your baby is under 12 months, once again, I wouldn't suggest more than 20 minutes to half an hour a day is more than enough, but never all at once. I would suggest not having more than three to five minutes at a time, depending what it is they're watching. And in fact, even one or two minutes uh, at most is recommended if you are gonna use the screen to interact with the young baby at any time. Or some parents I know have gotten into the practice of using screens to give themselves a break or let them have some downtime, which is fair. Um, uh, adults and, kids, and even siblings alike need downtime and a break from baby. Uh, however, the younger the baby is, the more they need to sleep and nap anyhow. So be sure to your rest and your sleeps and your naps uh, during those times as well, uh, so that you can take advantage of the baby's waking hours and also be mindful of getting some sleep and some rest yourself. If you have activity ideas or activity suggestions, uh, please send them to me. Please post them on our Facebook group. Let me know. Enjoy the beautiful weather. Um, social distance. Wear your mask. Wash your hands and stay safe. Have a wonderful day. Goodbye.